मन जीवन खेले पारायण मन सचंद्र
Nasta praeshu vabhadreshu Nasta praeshu vabhadreshu Nityam bhagavata sevaya Nityam bhagavata sevaya Bhagavati uttama shloke Bhagavati uttama shloke Bhaktir bhavati nashtiki Bhaktir bhavati nashtiki we're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter Number 31. Narada inst instructs the Prachetas. Text Number 15. Yataiva, Yataiva Suryat Prabhavanti Vara. Yataiva Suryat Prabhavanti Vara. Yataiva Suryat Prabhavanti Vara Yataiva Suryat Prabhavanti Vara Punas Chatasmin Pravishanti Kale Punas Chatasmin Pravishanti Kale Punas Chatasmin Pravishanti Kale Punas Chatasmin Pravishanti Kale Bhutani Bhumo Stira Jangamani Bhutani Bhumo Stira Jangamani Bhutani Bhumo Stira Jangamani Bhutani Bhumo Stira Jangamani Tathara Veva Guna Pravaha Tathara Veva Guna Pravaha Tathara Veva Guna Pravaha Yathara Veva Guna Pravaha Yathaiva Suryat Prabhavanti Vara Yathaiva Suryat Prabhavanti Vara Punas Chatasmin Pravishanti Kale Punas Chatasmin Pravishanti Kale Bhutani Bhumo Stira Jangamani Bhutani Bhumo Stira Jangamani Tathara Veva Guna Pravaha Tathara Veva Guna Pravaha Yateva Suryat Prabhavanti Vara Yateva Suryat Prabhavanti Vara Punascha Tasmin Pravishanti Kale Punascha Tasmin Pravishanti Kale Bhutani Bhumao Stira Changamani Bhutani Bhumao Stira Changamani Tata Haraviva Guna Pravaha Yataiva Suryat Prabhavanti Vara Yataiva Suryat Prabhavanti Vara Unashchatasmin Pravishanti Kale Unashchatasmin Pravishanti Kale Udani Bhumos Tira Changamani Udani Bhumos Tira Changamani Tata Harave Vakuna Pravaha Yathaiva Surya Prabhavanti Vara Yathaiva Surya Prabhavanti Vara Punascha Tasmin Pravishanti Kale Punascha Tasmin Pravishanti Kale Bhutani Bhuma Ustira Jangamani Bhutani Bhuma Ustira Jangamani Tatha Hara Veva Guna Pravaha Yathaiva Surya Prabhavanti Vara Punascha Tasmin Pravishanti Kale Punascha Tasmin Pravishanti Kale Uttani Bhumo Shthira Changamani Uttani Bhumo Shthira Changamani Tathara Veva Kuna Pravaha Tathara Veva Kuna Pravaha Yata, yata, as, as, 
Eva, Eva. Certainly. certainly, Suryat, Suryat. From, the sun. from the sun, Prabhavanti, Prabhavanti. is generated, generated. Vara. Vara, water, water. Puna. Puna, again, again. Cha. Cha. Cha, and, and. Tasmin. Tasmin, unto it. Unto it. Pravishante enters, enters Kale in due course of time. Bhutani all living entities. Bhumo to the earth. Stira not moving. Not moving. Jangamani, Jangamani. And, moving. and moving, tata, tata. tata. similarly, similarly. Haro. Haro, unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Eva. Eva, certainly, Guna Pravaha, Guna Pravaha. Emanation of material nature. Emanation of material nature. Mm. Translation. During the rainy season, water is generated from the sun, and in due course of time, during the summer season, the very same water is again absorbed by the sun. Similarly, all living entities, moving and inert, are generated from the earth, and again, after some time, they all return to the earth as dust. Similarly, everything emanates from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and in due course of time, everything enters into Him. Again, Om Om Purpur by Srila Prabhupada. Because of their poor fund of knowledge, impersonalist philosophers cannot understand how everything comes out from the Supreme Person and then merges into Him again. As Brahma Samhita confirms, Yashya Prabha Prabhavasanti Jagat Tata. Yata Prabha, what is this? Yata, yata Prabha, Prabhavan, Prabhavanti Jagadanta Koti, Kotish Vasesha Vasudati Vibhuti Binnam, Tat Brahma Nishkala Mananta Mashesha Bhutam, Govindam Adipursam Tamaham Pajami. Transcendental rays emanate from the body of Krishna, and within those rays, which are the Brahman effulgence, everything is existing. This is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 9.4, Matstani Sarva Bhutani. Although Krishna is not personally present everywhere, his energy is the cause of all creation. The entire cosmic manifestation is nothing but a display of Krishna's energies. The two examples given in this verse are very vivid. During the rainy season, the rain, by rejuvenating the production of vegetables on earth, enables man and animals to obtain living energy. When there is no rain, food is scarce, and man and animal simply die. All vegetables, as well as moving living entities, are originally products of the earth. They come from the earth and again they merge into the earth. Similarly, the total material energy is generated from the body of Krishna. And at such a time, the entire cosmic manifestation is visible. When Krishna winds up his energy, everything vanishes. This is explained in a different way in the Brahma Samhita. Yashyaika Nishvasi 
kalamata avalam biati vantilo ma vila jaja gadanda nata vishnor mahan saiha yashya kalavishesho govinda mari pursam tamaham bajamin this entire material creation comes from the body of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and at the time of annihilation again enters into him. This process of creation and dissolution is made possible by the breathing of the Mahavishnu who is only a plenary portion of Krishna. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shavakaya Chakzur Militam Yena Tasman Shri Guru Yenama Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Tadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Garo Shri Yatapada Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Sya Shri Rupam Sakrachatam Sahagana Raganatan Vitam Tam Sachivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitam Sya He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Shrishavanu Sude Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaurakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Narada Muni is giving instruction to the prachetas to help them get freed of their material entanglement. So Narada Muni has been giving nice examples and here today also two more examples are given. One is the example of the water during the rainy season, how it is generated from the sun and then during the summer season the same water is again absorbed by the sun. That's one example, the water. And then the second example is the living entities, both moving and not moving. They're generated from the earth and again come back <coughs> to the earth, coming back to the earth as dust. So these two examples are given to compare to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, how everything comes from him and at the time at the time of annihilation everything enters into him again in other words the lord is the cause of everything everything is coming from him and everything goes back to him at the end the two examples are instructive for us to understand how the Supreme Lord is maintaining this whole cosmic manifestation. Who else could maintain it? The work of maintenance is done by Vishnu. Only Vishnu can do these things. Brahma can create the mode of, with the influence of the mode of passion. He can create. And Lord Shiva can destroy under the influence of Tamagun. But the work of maintenance is given to Lord Vishnu. 
Lord Vishnu is situated in the mode of goodness and he can arrange for everything to take place. Everything comes from him. Prabhupada quotes 9.4 Sar, uh, Sarva Bud, Bud, Matstita Matstani Sarva Bhutani Matstani Sarva Yaidam Yaidam how does it begin? Yaidam everything Lord Krishna is saying in the Bhagavad Gita that everything rests in me but at the same time it's not I am not in everything they said behold by me in my unmanifested form this entire manifestation is create is is maintained created in that. by me in my no is, is it nine four is it? Mayatatamidam Ma sam sarvam jagat avyakta murtina, right? By me in my un avyakta, unmanifested form, this entire manifestation is created. Everything is in me, but I am not in everything. Lord Krishna is explaining like this. It's a, it's a bewildering verse to read in the Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> that everything is in me but I am not in everything. How is it possible? It's possible only by the inconceivable potency of the personality of Godhead. By his inconceivable potency, his achincha shakti, that he has that potency. And that is why it's so difficult to understand him. Trying to understand the Lord, even Brahma becomes bewildered looking at the Lord. He sees Lord Krishna in the fields of Vrindavan and he's sitting with his rice and yogurt in his hand and he's sitting with all the cowherd boys and Lord Brahma thinks, how could this be my Lord and Master? How could he be my Supreme over everyone? It, it's inconceivable that the Lord could perform these pastimes and at the same time have so much power. So we have to understand that there is such a thing as inconceivable power. That it, it's very difficult for people to accept that, that there are inconceivable powers. But we see examples every day of inconceivable potency. The sun, when you see the sun, of course. <laughs> <laughs> But the sun has that, achin, has that inconceivable power that every day producing so much heat and light, it's inconceivable. Where is the fire which could produce so much energy and never be exhausted? So the example of the sun is there, that it is giving so much energy. And where is that coming from? The light of the sun, that is coming from the Brahma Jyoti. It is the reflection of, from the Brahma Jyoti. And that Brahma Jyoti is the effulgence coming from the body of Lord Sri Krishna. Sarvam kauv idam Brahma. Shankaracharya gave great importance to that, that statement. He, he made that the whole basis of his Mayavada philosophy, that everything is Brahma. And Prabhupada explains here in the purport how everything is coming from the Brahman. And that Brahman, where is it coming from? It's coming from the effulgence of Lord Sri Krishna. We have to understand how is it possible? It's inconceivable. Try to understand it with our limited mind and senses, never possible. Atta Sri Krishna Namadi. Nabhavegriyamendriyani Sevan Mukhi Jivado Swayam Eva Spuratiyada The Lord cannot be understood by the material senses, but He reveals Himself when He is pleased by loving service. So, we want to understand the Lord. It's possible by His grace that He can reveal Himself. We cannot understand him by our own efforts, but if he wants to reveal himself to the devotee, then he can do that. And 
and he does. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna also states, to those who are constantly devoted to me and worship me with love, I give the understanding by which they may come to me. We want to understand Krishna is only possible by his mercy, not by our own efforts. We are trying to pull ourselves up. It's very difficult. The whole process of Krishna consciousness is descending, it's coming down. The knowledge, the mercy is coming down. It's not that we're pulling ourselves up. The Mayavadis, the impersonalists, the Jnanis, the Yogis, they're all pulling themselves up, trying to come up to the level of transcendence and to understand the Absolute. And it's a great <coughs> struggle for them. So much difficulty, Lord Krishna says in the 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, uh, the, 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 the kar karshati, so much trouble, you just get so much trouble in their efforts. And they make advancement very slowly with great difficulty. But if we take up devotional service and simply surrender to Krishna, then Krishna helps the devotee to come to him. Krishna pulls the devotee up. We see the example, there's a, a beautiful illustration in the Bhagavad Gita. The devotees in the ocean of the material existence and Lord Vishnu is coming on the back of Garuda and he's taking the hand of the devotee, picking him up out of the ocean of material existence. So like that, we want to understand the Lord. We have to depend on His mercy that He can reveal Himself to us. We cannot force ourselves onto the Lord. We have to get His mercy. By the mercy of the spiritual master, then we get the mercy of Krishna. So we have to also please the devotees. You want to get the mercy of Krishna, you have to first of all get the mercy of the devotee. And Prahlad Maharaj appreciates that also. We were studying Prahlad's prayers for the Nisringa Chaturdasi and Prahlad Maharaj recognizes how much he was dependent on the mercy of the devotee, how Narada Muni had given him that knowledge, he'd, he'd opened his eyes, he'd saved him from the uh, falling into the well of material illusion. And Prahlad Maharaj describes how his senses were blinded by material desires and he was slowly falling into a well. But the spiritual teacher Narada Muni came and, and saved him. And Prahlad says, how could I ever give up such a person who has been so kind to save me from that, that plight of falling into the well? So Prahlad Maharaj recognizes that he could only approach Lord Nusringadev because of the mercy of Narada Muni. We cannot simply go to the Lord directly but we have to go through the spiritual teachers, through the parampara. The parampara shows us the path to approach the Lord. So here Narada Muni is describing this potency, this great potency of the personality of Godhead. How everything is coming from Him. And at the same time, at the end, it all goes back into Him. Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna said, Aham sarvasya prabhavo mata sarvam pravartati iti matvabhajantimam buddhabhavasmamrita I am the source of the material and spiritual worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who know this worship me with all their hearts. So we have to understand how everything comes from Lord Krishna. It's because it comes from him, it's his property. It's meant for him. Similarly, our bodies, our physical bodies of 
with senses. They are the property of the Supreme Lord. He is Rishikesh. He is the proprietor, the master of the senses, the proprietor of the senses. Our senses are meant for his service. They're not meant for our, sat for our sense enjoyment, but they're meant for his service. We have to see everything in relation to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, recognizing that it's all his property and use it carefully in his service. Of course, how can we serve the Lord? We don't know how to please the Lord. One Mayavadi said that to me, big Mayavadi, and I was in Tirupati, and this my wife said, you people, you think you can serve the Lord? What can, how can, you know, it, it, he, he is right, actually, it, the, it's a very difficult thing, how to serve the personality of Godhead. That is why we have to get guidance from the spiritual authorities to show us how to approach the Lord, how to please Him. The, the pure devotee, they know Krishna and they know how to please Him. They can direct us how we, what we need to do to please Him. It's very important for us to be under the guidance of the pure devotee. So Srila Prabhupada gave us so much instruction what we needed to do, how we need to serve Krishna, what we have to do for him. One, one time, one devotee, one lady, she was making a dress for Krishna and she put a pocket on Krishna's shirt and then she put sweet balls in his shirt. <laughs> and Prabhupada said, what is this? She said, he said to her, you cannot just do like that. He said, that is not our process for offering to Krishna. You don't just make up your own speculations about how you're going to give Krishna sweet balls. We offer the sweets on the plate, on the altar. You don't stick them in Krishna's pocket. <laughs> you know, sometimes devotees say, we have these wild imaginations how to do these, how to do things. We have to be very careful to follow. Otherwise, in course of time, everything will be lost. And that is why Lord Krishna came to again re-establish the disciplic succession. Evam parampara praptam imam rajasheo vidu sakaleniha mahata yoga nashta prarantapa. Yoga nashta. The, the knowledge was lost in course of time. Because the knowledge was lost, Lord Krishna had to come again and re-establish the disciplic succession. So we had, Prabhupada was so concerned that we follow very carefully. His Holiness Jayadweda Swami was very concerned about this. He wrote his book about kirtan standards, you know. He's very concerned about how kirtans are changing gradually over the course of time. Different innovations are coming into the kirtans. And so Jayadweda Swami wrote a whole book on the whole subject. What? should be the kirtan, how Prabhupada wanted the kirtan. Of course, it's Jayadvaita's thinking on it. It's not necessarily the absolute that everybody has to do what he says, you know, but, but he's presenting his feelings on it, you know. He showed it to different devotees and not everybody was so en enthused by it, you know, some people. Some people say, well, you know, you, you, and Prabhupada also, Prabhupada also sometimes would be, would tolerate different things. Like, uh, one of the things which we do is we worship Prabhupada in front of the deities. You know, in the Nectar of Devotion, Rupa Goswami mentions about, you know, we shouldn't worship people in front of the deities. But Prabhupada allowed it. Prabhupada allowed it because he saw the enthusiasm of the devotees. 
and even Hari Sori Prabhu asked him about it. And Prabhu said, yeah, he said, it's for the enthusiasm of the devotees, that they have that mood, so he didn't want to divert them. He let it go on. So sometimes like that Prabhupada could tolerate these kind of things. And that, that's one way of understanding it. Anyway. But anyway, uh, dif different devotees have feelings about things. How to please Krishna? Not an easy topic, you know. How to? How can we're so small and we're so finite and limited? How could we understand how to please the absolute? Of course, in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says different things about how we can offer a leaf and a flower and a fruit and water to him, and we can please him with these offerings. But it's not the offering; it's the devotion which he wants. It's not the, just the fruit and the flowers. Flowers, we could do with more flowers here actually. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we seem to lack flowers a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Usually we have garlands for the deities. And too difficult here eh, to get flowers. We buy them usually once a week and they're quite expensive. Also the quality is not so good. Because the ones we buy, they are full of chemicals. We don't have so many natural flowers here. Yeah, it's a fact that flowers today... One devotee came from America, he came to Mayapur, and they gave him a garland. He said, I said, oh, this is amazing. He said, this got, these flowers have an aroma. They have a fragrance. He said, in the USA, the flowers have no smell. <laughs> They don't have any smell, it's all, you know, chemicals and everything. It's all polluted in the Kali Yuga. That's why Prabhupada wanted us to do all these things ourselves. You know, he wanted us to grow our own food, make our evening talk devotees. He said in the future you may not be able to get paper. He said you should be able to make your own paper so that when you want to print books, you can print books. <laughs> so he, he was warning us, you know, how Kali Yuga, as it progresses, everything det deteriorates. We have to be ready for all of these things. So it, it's difficult to please Krishna with our limited resources what we have to give to Krishna. But what Krishna really wants is our devotion, our love and devotion. That is the main thing, right? It's not the offering, it's not the, all the fruits and all the flowers and everything, but it's the devotion which we have, that we want to worship Krishna. And we, the example is there, how the Brahmana was, he had nothing and he was worshipping Krishna in his mind. He had heard in the lecture how you can worship Krishna in the mind. Even you don't have any paraphernalia, you don't have any means or resources, but you can worship Krishna in the mind. And so he began to worship Krishna in his mind. And every day he would meditate. In his mind he would meditate on worshipping the deity. And in his mind he'd go to the holy rivers and he'd take a big silver pot and collect the water from the rivers and bring it back to bathe the deities. You know, water from the... we call the holy rivers. We use mantras to call the holy rivers into our Achman, Achman pot. Ganga Chaya Monai Chaiva, like that. We're chanting the names of all the holy rivers, calling the rivers to come. So he was doing it in his mind. And he was every day meditating and collecting water, bathing the deities, and then dressing the deities, and putting on things like garlands. And he was meditating on cooking for the deities also. You know, he had nothing. <laughs> he didn't have anything, you know. He, he was meditating and cooking for the, for the Lord. And he, he would do it every day. He would meditate on like this. And 
Of course, you know the story, he was cooking sweet rice one day, and when you cook sweet rice, it shouldn't be hot, right? It should be cool, cold, cool. If it's too hot, <laughs> burn the tongue. <laughs> not, not, we used to make sweet rice, I remember. When I was in, I was, for some time, I was staying in the Brooklyn Temple in New York. Not the one they have now, the one long time ago in a place called Henry Street. And we, we had a very big Sunday feast. Every Sunday then, in the 1970s, we had hundreds of people come for the Sunday program. And we would cook, we would begin cooking, like on Thursday. We'd, <laughs> we'd cook the sweet rice, put it in the fridge, you know, get, get it all nice. And, and Hari Kesh was there at one point. He was in charge of the kitchen at one point, even. Before he took sannyas, he, was, he had come there and, and he was there organizing the kitchen. And we cooked a really big feast and hundreds of people would come. And it, was, it was really big, you know. And hundreds of people mean American people, you know. There were no Indians in America, in America at that time, 1970s, very less. So it was all Americans who were coming. They, they really liked the program, you know, the prasadam was just unbelievable. It was so opulent. <laughs> but anyway, the brahmana, he's cooking the sweet rice and he wanted to make sure it's not too hot, so he put his finger in it just because you're not supposed to taste it, right? Sometimes the bridge Basi people, you know, they're cooking and, you know, <laughs> they'll taste it. <laughs> but bridge Basi people, they're different. They have Raga Bhakti. They're on the platform of Raga Bhakti. They're, you know, they don't have to follow rules and regulations, you know. We're not on that level. You can't imitate them. And so the, the, he didn't taste it. He put his finger in the rice and ah, burned the finger. And Lord Vishnu was in Vaikuntha watching and he was laughing. <laughs> And Lakshmi was with him and she said, what are you laughing at? <laughs> and then he told her and he brought the Brahmana back to Godhead. The Brahmana went back to Godhead because of his devotion. He'd been worshipping the Lord so nicely in his mind. One of the forms of the deity, one different materials can be used for the deity. Here we have the deities are made from Wood, right? Wood, neem. Neem wood, yeah. At least corn huh? ties neem wood. Corn and tie will be neem wood. And Jagannatha is also a uh, wood form, made from wood, carved out of wood. So, uh, but other materials can be used like stone and paint and jewels, but it can also be in the mind. The dig can also be in the mind. It's one of the authorized methods. They don't mention things like PVC, <laughs> you know, uh, synthetics, you know. Sometimes they have, they make these little gornitai dolls out of PVC resin or something. That's not quite bona fide. It can be brass, can be metal, you know, or astasa, asta, what is it called? Uh, Asta Dhatu, yeah, yeah, right. Eight metal, eight metals mixed together. These are all authorized, but resin, no, that's not proper. But the mind, that is an authorized form of the Lord. You can worship the Lord, and you can please Him by that. But there, Lord Krishna also said there's other ways to please Him. He said. Nachatasman manusheshu kaschin me priyakritama. He said, there's someone who is even more dear to me, the most dear to me, the one who is trying to distribute, distribute Krishna consciousness to others, telling people about Krishna. He is the most dear. And Lord Chaitanya, of course, had told the Brahmana from Kurma, Kurmadesh that uh, Yari Deki Tarikao Krishna Upadesh. Wherever you go, whoever you meet, tell them about Krishna. So, Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, 
person who is telling people about Krishna, he is the most dear. It's important for us to have that mood. Our Krishna consciousness movement is a preaching mission, you know. We don't just want to build big temples to sit comfortably in the temple. That is like the impersonalist or the Buddhists. The Buddhism, they make big temples and you know, nothing happens. They don't do anything. They never, they never do anything. But our, but our mission, our, our mission is to go out and preach and, and to distribute this message of Krishna Consciousness. And the more we distribute the message of Krishna, the more we get realization ourselves. If we don't distribute this, this knowledge, then it would just simply be lost. Just like when we teach Bhakti Shastri. Did you all do Bhakti Shastri? I, we had some people, I taught a class to people who were from Switzerland in the class one time. Anyway, Bhakti Shastri, very good. They learn slokas, right? You have to learn slokas. But after the exam, they forget them. After the, you know, a few weeks after the course is over, what was that sloka? Oh, oh, <laughs> you know, they forget. They learn everything once, and the, like like when you study at college, you know, you, you you study for the exam, and after the exam, you think, "Glad that's over," you know, forget it, you know, it's all forgotten. So people learn bhakti shastri like that. They they learn the slokas and they forget them again very quickly. You have to use them regularly. And the knowledge of Krishna Consciousness is like that. You have to use it, you have to be using it, otherwise you'll forget it. Prabhupada gives the example, that just like clay pot. If you'd gone to India before you were born, like 1970s or something, you know, <laughs> they had they had clay pots in India. They didn't have refrigerators. So everything was kept in clay. And clay would keep the water cool. You, you'd boil the water and put the water in the clay pot. And the clay pot would cool the water because clay is porous. And so some of the water would evaporate through the clay and it would cause the water to be cool and it would stay cool even though it would be scorching hot outside you know the temperature would be so hot but the water in the clay pot would be cool so we didn't need refrigerators actually you, you need these clay pots uh, Echo Village the Gaudiya at Radnath Maharaj's people Echo Village Govardhan, Govardhan right they, they very much want to do all that to use clay and use because it, it's so much better than what we use you know the styrofoam and all these things which are really garbage and really pollute the environment but if you have clay it comes from the earth they're made of earth and can go back to the earth again you know and so they, they were planning to develop that to use clay so anyway, the point, the example is if you have a clay pot and you put water in the clay pot, the water will be cool, but the water also evaporates. In other words, the water level will go down and gradually, you know, the water will just dry up. There will be no water left in the pot. Even though you didn't drink it, the water just evaporates through the clay. So, knowledge is like that as well. And our Krishna consciousness is like, if we don't use what we're learning about Krishna and what we've understood about Krishna, if we don't distribute it and share it with others, it will just dry up, we we'll just forget everything. And so, we have, to, we have to be willing to Go out there and meet the people and talk to them and share with them. Sometimes people have a lot of reading groups. Do you have reading groups here in Zurich? You have reading together? 
people read together. Reading is good, but more important than just reading is discussing and explaining. It's not just reading. It becomes a reading exercise, you know. You read it. What did you read? Oh, I don't know. What was it about? What was the text saying? Oh, I don't know. They read it, but they didn't learn anything. So it's very important that when we read, we have to discuss, we have to explain it. Not just simply read it. Otherwise, you don't get so much benefit. You get something, but you get more if you will discuss and explain with each other. It's important. Make, we make groups. You have a lot of groups on the internet. So many groups are there. And they may be reading Bhagavad Gita and other books. It's important to discuss them and to explain what's being said. So here also Narada Muni is talking to the prachetas and he's telling them to understand how the Lord is maintaining everything. Everything came from him and at the end everything goes back to him. And he has given two examples to illustrate this. He has given the example of the water. Water is coming from the sun in the beginning. The sun causes water to evaporate. It's taken up into the clouds. And the clouds come and pour the rain on Zurich. <laughs> Right? And then the water goes back. When the sun comes out, then the water is evaporated again, goes back to the sun. So that was one example. And the other example was the living entities, all different living entities moving and in air. They're all coming from the earth. How do they come from the earth? Well, we know Sita came from the earth, right? Mother Sita came from the earth. Difficult to understand how, but certainly plants and vegetables and trees and so on, they're all growing from the earth. And uh, how, could, how can we understand the human also comes from the earth? Anybody can tell me? There's this verse how from food that's anat anat pavanti bhutani so a uh, human being is made of food coming from the earth. Anat pavanti bhutani all living entities subsist on food grains. Yeah. And okay, so we we have to eat grains to get life. And they even give the example that sometimes the soul falls down from the higher planets and it will take, it will enter into the corn or into the grain and then the man eats the grain and then it, the, the soul enters into his semen and then he imparts a semen into the womb of his wife, produce a child. So, okay, that's one possible explanation. That because we, we need food grains and in the purport Prabhupada is also mentioning that without food, without food we'll die. You need food to eat and the food comes from the earth. So we're dependent on the earth for life. So we come from the earth and at the end we go back to the earth, right? In the Christian tradition from dust, <laughs> from dust thou art dust and they throw the dirt on the coffin, you know, when they're burying the coffin from the, the, I can't remember what they say when they're burying the coffin, something about from thou art, thou shalt something like that. Yeah, something about dust anyway. <laughs> throw the dirt on the coffin and bury the coffin and then since you become dust. So we come from the earth and we go back to the earth. <laughs> the body goes back to the earth, of course, not the soul, but the body, material body talking about. And so these two examples are given to illustrate that everything is coming from the Lord and everything goes back to the Lord. The whole cosmic manifestation comes from Him. Uh, 
Well, that is described. It's already been described earlier, can, second canto, third canto, process of creation, how the Lord creates everything. In detail, it's all described in Srimad Bhagavatam. How in the Bible, they simply talk about the Lord created everything in seven days and seven nights. They don't tell you how he did it, but in the Bhagavatam, we find out how he did it. The primary creation is done by Vishnu. You have the different elements, the Mahabhutis, earth, water, fire, air, ether, how they are created. And due to the combination of the false ego and the glance of the Lord, and the creation comes about from subtle to gross, the subtlest element, earth, is created first and how they relate, the different elements relate to the different senses. The, f uh, and the finest element is ether. And in ether there's only one sense object. What is the sense object in ether? Sound. Sound, yes. So sound is the, yeah. with the ear. We use our ear to perceive the sound. And then after ether, next element is air. And with air, there is sound, but there is also touch. touch. Yes, you can feel the air, right? The cold, oh, cold air, oh, warm air, you, the, you, the touch of the air. And how do you perceive touch? With the skin, right? The skin perceives touch. And then after air comes fire. And with fire, there is form. There's a form, and form is perceived by the eyes. And then from fire comes water, and with water there is? Taste. As well as all the other ones, as well all the previous elements there. And so with water taste, and taste is from the tongue. And then earth, the final one is earth, which is? Smell. The smell, the aroma. I am the original fragrance of the earth. There was one incense, brand of incense, earth scents. <laughs> earth scents. <laughs> come from the earth. Oh, everything comes from the earth. So you can see very systematic. Where else would you find such a systematic presentation of creation? It's only in the Vedic literature that we get this very clear and systematic presentation of how the creation comes about. So the primary creation is done by Lord Vishnu and then secondary creation is taken up by Lord Brahma. He's the engineer. The engineers, you know, they, they take the parts and put them together. They make things like televisions and computers and so on motor cars. You can buy parts, make your own motor car. We make our own Rathiatra chariots, right? <laughs> we buy the parts, get an axle from somewhere, and put a body on it. Okay, any questions, comments? Yes. Also when we read and sometimes if there are no proper audience, can we also write? Uh, our realizations with that also. Oh, very good. To write. Writing is also, that's a very good thing to do. Yes, Prabhupada encouraged. He said, we should regularly write. He said, don't expect to get it published, <laughs> but write. You know, write. It's, it's a very good practice to have, to write your realizations. Prabhupada liked us to do that. So writing, yeah, writing is also, you have to think about, the, just like talking, you have to think what to say. So writing also, you have to think, present your ideas, present your understandings. Nowadays, of course, people write, they have a blog or they have a website and put every, you can put everything there, you know, you don't have to print it all, you can just stick it on the internet and share it with others. So it's very nice. 
Are you writing? Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. And you can write for Back to Godhead. They always need articles. They may not publish, but no harm to write. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're very particular what they publish. You, know? you can write so many things. <laughs> But they're very, they, have, they have a very clear standards, what they want, what they're going to publish. But it's nice, you know, they're right. And you can send it to them, they'll give you feedback. They'll tell you why they don't like it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they have a board of editors. <laughs> but it, it's good, and it's a good practice, writing. Okay. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Shukupad jai. Gorpid Manandi. Holiness Bhakti Manandi. Ki jai. Okay. Oh, 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 ok